Hello folks, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to secure your CloudFront distribution. So the idea is that yes, people can come on and stream videos. Yes, the website will be able to handle loads of traffic. That's all very good. However, they will need to be signed on. That's the idea. So let's kick things off by creating a new folder anywhere you like. I'm going to call this one CF underscore test. It's a brand new folder. And then I'm going to open the terminal and navigate into this folder like so. Okay, we're inside it and everything is cool. It's an empty folder, obviously. Now I want you to write npm space init and I'm setting up a node.js project here. So I'm just going to hit return and there we go. Uh, Index.js, that's all cool. And that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. Yep, there we go. And I'll just uh, say yes and we are cool. So now I'd like you to take a trip to npmjs.com, uh, the Node Package Manager website, and do a search for cloud front all one word and that's the vibe okay cloud front and you'll see one here that's called aws hyphen cloud front hyphen sign that's the one that we're going to use so click into that and you'll see that we come onto this page that helps us to generate signed urls for cloud front links <laughs> okay so the way that we would install this is we would just say npm install aws cloud front sign i'm going to do that right now so over in the terminal let me just uh, make some space it's going to be that okay here we go perfect now we're going to borrow some nice sample code to get started with this. Um, the guy who made this gave us a few nice examples here. However, I actually think that the example on GitHub is better because it keeps everything in one place. It's just one file, you know. So click on to this GitHub link here. And if we click into examples, and then into signed url.js we've got a pretty nice example here and that's what we're going to use so just copy that okay so with that now copied i'm going into a uh, sublime text actually i'm going to open up this folder that i've made cf test here it is here okay and i'm going to create a new file and i'm going to call it index.js and save that and then I'm pasting in the sample code and pressing save. Alright now I know that it's early days but let's just run this to see what the lay of the land is okay. So I'm still inside this folder here we've got our index.js file if we say node space dot hit return you'll see that already we have a big URL that has been presented. The details on the text that we just pasted in will not match up with our particular CloudFront instance. So that's what we are going to deal with next. So I would like you to click into your AWS console and then I'd like you to go to your username, click on that, and then select my security credentials and you'll be taken to a page that looks a little bit like this we're going to uh, click on continue to security credentials and then i want you to click on cloud front key pairs okay and we are going to create a new key pair Ah, hold on. I need to make these inactive. <laughs> okay. I must have too many of them. Right, here we go. So click on create new key pair. 
and you have successfully created a new one. And then we've got a link, download private key file. Click on that and it downloads a file. Let's have a look at it. So here we are and that's what it looks like, okay? That's our private key. At least that's mine, yours will be similar. So now I want you to copy that private key Head over to index.js, now let me make this a bit bigger, and the vibe is we're going to paste in our actual key and then do the quotations something like this. This is why I really like sublime text, by the way. Those vertical selection things, man, they really make life easier. So then we've got a little backslash thing and a plus symbol here that we need to do. So I'm just going to do that. And then we will do one of them down here. And then this part is just an ordinary single quote. Okay, so now we have our own private key here. We can delete the one that came with the example. There it goes. Can even tidy up a little bit if it makes you feel good. You can do anything you like. Now, if we move down, you'll see a thing here that says CF, obviously CloudFront, key pair ID. And we have a string here, it's an alphanumeric thing. If we go to the AWS console, and you can see that we've got an access key ID here. So just select that and then paste that in here. Okay, and then we've got a CloudFront URL. Okay, so if we just go back to the console here, click on AWS on the top left and then click into CloudFront then click on the distribution that you're interested in and you'll see that we have a domain name here. Do you see that? So just copy that, head back in, head back in here and we want to paste in that domain that we've got here. Uh, notice we're adding in http colon slash slash and that is the vibe. Now, we have a thing here, forward slash, I'll make this bigger, forward slash path to S3 object. Now in the example that we've been doing, there is no uh, major path thing, we don't have subfolders and all of that. So I'm just going to put the name of the file in and I think, I'll just check actually, I think the file was called long jump. I'm going to just quickly check that. Yeah, there we go. So I had a file called long jump.mp4. So it's going to be long jump.mp4. Just save that. And I'm just quickly checking. Everything looks okay. Yep, yep, yep. Now, this thing here, expiry time, is very important. This is actually milliseconds, so that means that this would expire in one minute, okay? Uh, one minute into the future, which is kind of short, but just bear in mind you may need to increase this, you know? If you're doing a tutorial series and people are stopping and skipping ahead and going back and all of that, well, each time it will be doing another call to CloudFront and if you don't set this forward, then you're going to get caught out. Just so you know, my own default is going to be one hour, okay? So that's that. I'm going to just save this now. I'm heading back into the terminal here, and I'm going to run this. And here, now we have another signed URL. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test this out by going into CF test. I'm going to create a new folder and I'll call the folder, um, no, let's call it web, just to give you an idea of what's happening. Web, right? And then I'll create a new file and I'll call it index.html and we'll save that. And I'm going to build up a very basic HTML page here just to get started, okay? 
So this page is indeed going to be pretty basic and it's going to have a video player in it and HTML5 can do that. So the way we would have a video player on is we just say video like so and in here we would say SRC equals and you chuck all of that stuff in and if you add on a thing that says controls that's going to give us some different buttons and whatnot on the player, which is cool. Um, you can add in your browser does not support HTML5 videos, just in case there's somebody from a really old computer or something. And in our source here, we would paste in the signed URL that was generated by our script. Now that was probably longer than a minute, so I'm just gonna generate another one here. There we go. And very quickly, I'm gonna grab that, paste it in, save. And now I'm gonna navigate into that very simple web page straight from the desktop here, opening up. And as you can see, everything works just fantastically well. Okay, now just to prove that this is all working and it's doing this all securely, I'm going to wait a couple of minutes. And in fact, that turned out to be considerably more than a couple of minutes. So I'm going to copy this address here and I'll open up Safari just so that there's no caching vibes that are going to let us down here. And I'm going to paste the address in. And as you can see, the video is not available. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.